Yeah, well, I'd welcome every the audience here today and um, our online audience as well. Before the programme starts, I would like to tell you that the emergency exits are there on the left. Anybody requiring to go to the toilet, the doors are on the right. If you do move about, I would ask you to be careful of any wires or anything that are on the floor so we don't have any accidents. Um, apart from that, everything is okay. Um, as I said, I welcome everybody to this sh interactive community internet show at the Fact Centre in Wood Street, Liverpool. At present, we are in the box and um, the show is done by Ten and Spin. My name is John Pettit. I live on the 14th floor of a high-rise block, and um, I have been trying to. I have. Aren't you? Oh, okay. I thought we'd started. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Fact Centre at Liverpool. Um, this show is being put on by Tenant Spin, and it's an interactive community internet show. Today's programme is about the right to buy and the difficulties in obtaining a mortgage when you get through the problems of the right to buy. Um, my name is John Pettit. I live in a on the 14th floor of a block of flats. Last September, so far back, I had, got, uh, I had gone ahead with my right to buy and I had to get a mortgage. Um, I saw a mortgage broker and everything was going well until I mentioned that I lived on the 14th floor. And then conversation abruptly stopped. The guy was very disappointed and that was that. Um, since then, I've employed a number of mortgage brokers and they couldn't do anything for me. Um, one firm, and I have to mention these, was Hayden Glen, and they were very good. They got me to the point with Abbey National, um, the guy Dave Fleming from Hayden Glen, he worked very hard for me. He got me to the point with Abbey National where I was going to get a mortgage, very, very favourable terms, and I was delighted. Um, Surveyor came along, and um, from there everything went bad. He examined the block and he declined to give me a mortgage. And this is what he said, and I'd like to quote this: "This is a top floor flat of a purpose-built four-story block, originally built for local authority tenants' occupation. The block is now managed by Liverpool Housing Trust, and it is understood few of the flats are owner-occupied." As such, it's an, it, has, it is anticipated that future demand and saleability will be poor. Therefore, the application should be declined. I invited this guy to the show, but he declined. And there has been, in general, a lack of interest. I also invited Maria Eagle, the MP for my constituency, and she declined to come. I also invited an independent surveyor to give his opinion, and he declined to come. And um, it seems as if nobody is interest, interested in this programme. But as a matter of interest and why these, why these leaflets are there, anybody living in Liverpool can see that there's no difficulty in filling flats. The original flats, um, these 10 pence flats were £250,000. When they were getting refurbished, there was... Um, they were queuing for three days to buy these. Um, and now Kirby, there's four blocks of flats in Kirby, and they are going to get refurbished. Um, apart from the people I've just mentioned, I went around every high street mortgage broker or um, building society and asked them for a mortgage. And they couldn't, or they wouldn't give me one. Um, I wrote a letter to, well, I wrote 74 letters to, to different MPs and to different organisations who I thought would, might be interested. Um, my point 
um, was this. When these mortgage lenders, when you see them, their excuses are not enough leaseholders in the building, and this is a real catch-22 situation. If they won't lend, how do they, do they expect to get lease, leaseholders? And this is only by lending at a usurious rate. And you can see from the statement by the surveyor, he's saying the same thing, not enough leaseholders in the building. But how are they going to get enough leaseholders in the building if they won't give you a mortgage? The other excuse is we don't lend above a certain floor. They name anything from the second floor to the fourth and so on. The other excuse is because you have a social landlord, you or we won't be able to sell your flat. Even HSBC, and there's the headlines there, life in a high rise flat comes at a high price with loans of up to 14%. I went to HSBC and I didn't get very far with them. First thing they said to me, I took this um, cutting out of the paper in with me. They said that they'd never seen it. And they said, um, oh, we don't give mortgages. We only give loans and you are too old. But so that was this. So as I say, nobody was prepared to give me a mortgage. Um, I went to... I've, I've tried everywhere, I've done everything I can, and it's been very d disappointing, um, the response from people. In these letters that I wrote to the government, or to the, to the MPs, I stated that in effect, the mortgage lenders are denying us our right to buy. Um, as I said, I wrote to 60, 63 MPs, and I got 25 replies. Of these 25 replies, um, one from the officers of the, um, the Prime Minister, and he referred my letter to the Office of the Deputy Prime Minister, the Department of Trade and Industry, and the Treasury Department. Um, basically, they did reply to me, but they have ignored the issue that you can't get a mortgage. What they're basically saying is that it's a business decision by the mortgage lenders. Um, the reply from the ODPM was very comprehensive, and I don't want to go reading it out now, but it is there. But at the end of the day, there's nothing to give um, tenants in high-rise flats with a social landlord a mortgage. And this, to me, seems to be um, a human rights issue. As far as I know, um, under the human rights, if a section of the community is disadvantaged, and they're not being treated e equally with other people, then it's the job of the government to set this right. And this was all, um, this was all ignored. The letters from the MPs, it was quite amusing, this. They all said um, parliamentary protocol forbids us from getting involved in, another cons in an MP's, um, from another constituency's business. And we will refer your letter to Ma Maria Regal. They practically all said that without fail. Um, when I did get a letter off Maria, Maria Eagle, she said I'll refer this matter to the, um, Ruth Kelly, um, the Minister Fi for Banking and Finance. I got a letter from Michael Howard, the leader of the opposition's um, secretary, and he ignored the issue too. That's all this letter was about, is how good the Conservatives are at providing housing and how bad um, Labour is. So. Th this is basically the, st the, st the story, you know. Um, no matter how you try, it's basically impossible to get a mortgage. And you can see from these things here, there's, mo there's, there's flats being built all over Liverpool. They're getting sold before they're even refurbished, but these are all by private landlords. If you've got a social landlord, you've got more chance of being struck by lightning than getting a mortgage. And this is my story, and I welcome any comments on this. Well, my name's Paul Myers. I'm a, a secretary of a residence association uh, called Visra in the Everton area. And I can confirm everything that John say, s s has been saying. There's a massive interest in uh, buying um, uh, their own pe people's own flats in, in my area. They were promised it um, in 1992 in return for balloting uh, the HATS, the Housing Action Trust system in. And they were promised that your right to buy will stay the same as if you were a council tenant. This was 1992. Since then, we've been told um, you can't exercise your right to buy um, for three, four, five, then 10, 
and now uh, it's rumoured 15 years. Um, by that time, most uh, people that have been involved with the HAT system or the stock transfer system uh, will be well into pensionable age. Um, and again, the, s the snags are, when you're of pensionable age, uh, how easy it is to get a mortgage. Uh, but I think one of the main things here is nobody is like um, refereeing what goes on in this kind of strange kind of game where flats can be sold for 10 pence to developers but they can't be sold to the original people that have lived there for many, many years. Um, and again, in the stock transfer system, flats and houses can be given away for virtually nothing, and yet they can't be sold to people that want them, to want to pay you know, a reasonable price for them. Um, a lot of people are, are now eligible for the full 75% uh, discount on, on their flats with the right to buy. But again, I can echo what John's been saying. All roads seem to lead back to John Prescott, uh, who has ultimate decision over this type of stuff. And he seems to be hell-bent on uh, destroying the right to buy. Um, maybe this was because it was a conservative policy. But there are two sides of the coin here. On one side, uh, they're de denying the right to buy to people they pur uh, purport to represent. And yet on the other side of the coin, they're selling uh, vast estates away for virtually nothing to private developers. Um, so I, th I think I can um, understand what John's on about. He's, he, he's been standing out for quite some time now uh, to try and talk some sense into the situation. And uh, it, I find it's a, a, an extremely strange situation um, where people want to, to buy their own flat. Um, we've been told that a lot of high-rise blocks and uh, refurbished blocks uh, are in band A, which is the price range of about £40,000. Um, now, if people had the, the right to buy with a full 75% discount, that would mean nearly virtually everybody that's been involved in the HAT system or and the stock transfer system as well, being eligible to buy their own house for £10,000. So how difficult is it to get a mortgage for £10,000 from somebody that's going to be paying rent anyway for an appreciable number of years. And some of these people have been paying rents for 25, 30 years. Has it come to a stage now where we can say that, OK, if you, you have stayed a tenant for that long and you've paid so much into the, you know, for this house, house or flat already, should we be saying, well, hang on, you're, you're now entering pensionable age. You can't get a mortgage. So how about let's review the situation for maybe a nominal fee it was 10 pence in, in the flats that uh, John's referred to, and those flats were in my area. And I know one of the people that did actually queue out um, you know, for one of those flats, um, and there was a massive demand for them. Um, should, should we not be saying um, that now you're entering pensionable age, you've lived in this flat or house for 25 years, maybe we should give you the house, never mind paying for it, we should give it to you. Uh, a lot of people in um, my area, John's area, um, and I suppose a lot of the, uh, the areas in Liverpool, a lot of people, uh, once they hit pensionable age, um, a lot of them will be claiming housing benefit. So is it not a good, sensible policy to say, we'll give you your house and flat, that means uh, you have to look after the maintenance, but that also means that the city council doesn't have to pay thousands upon thousands of pounds in housing benefit. That's a great big headache. Um, so isn't it about time to recognise the time a person has spent in a flat or house um, and just say, well, hang on, um, it's yours. Yeah. I don't know, John. I was yeah, well, I mean, there's another aspect of this, too. Um, I was speaking to a friend of mine, Ronnie Ross, from York House in the Sefton Park area, and a few years ago, um, he wanted to exercise the right to buy, and he and other people I know, they were put off from doing this because they were told they'd have to pay, in one respect, in Ronnie's respect, up to £30,000 towards the cost of refurbishments. And another person told me they were told they would have to put up to um, £23,000 towards the cost of refurbishments. And in my own particular case, I was told £11,000 towards the cost of refurbishment, but it's nothing going to be anything like that. It might be around 3000 but this does put people off. And in Ronnie's, Ronnie Ross's case, and I've asked his permission to quote him, he told me that um, 
two or three years ago when he started, it was impossible for him to get a mortgage also, and he had to get a loan and pay up to 14% for it. And it seems to me, you know, the government's got it wrong. They should step in and, and do something about this because the poorest section of society are being penalised and we're, we're being made to pay excessive um, rates or interest on the loans. Um, even at my age now, and I'm 69, I know I could get a re uh, um, go out and get a loan. No problem. I mean, they're, they're practically begging you every day to take out a loan. All your junk, more junk mail is about getting loans. But who wants to, uh, to have a loan? That's um, around 14% or three times the interest rate on a mortgage. The, the, the whole system is crazy, and I've got to uh, agree with Paul as well. When they're talking about um, charging you for the refurbish refurbishment costs, um, we've been paying rent for 20 years, 30 years or more, and a section of that rent money should have gone on keeping the blocks or the flats or the houses up to date, and this money was never spent on this. But you paid to have a, a decent home, and you haven't got one, and now that they're go going to give you a decent home, you're supposed to pay towards the cost of it. And I think this is all so wrong too. I mean, <laughs> I suppose I've had no difficulty um, in getting people to agree with me in what Paul said, that we should be given, after 20 years or 30 years of living in them and spending rent, and while we've been spending rent, the flats have been steadily going downhill, they should be given to us. And all this money that's being spent on refurbishments, it's our money anyway, what, we, what we've been paying in for rent over the last 20 and 30 years. I, I think sometimes it's uh, too hard to, for some people to think. And t the, the concept of actually giving a flat away to somebody that's lived there for 20 years, or around about that time, I think it's too challenging for some people. Uh, and yet, privately, um, a lot of people do agree. And, and these are people in positions um, that can uh, decide on our, on our futures. Privately, they say, well, yes, it sounds pretty good. Um, we'll say, what about this? What about um, people that have already paid for a mortgage? How, how would they feel? But the thing is, uh, people that have paid for mortgages in the past, they've had massive uh, tax relief um, that uh, people paying rent have, have never had. Um, so, I mean, it, it's kind of a question of, of balances, <coughs> swings and roundabouts and, and that kind of thing. And it, it just needs somebody in there with a genuine concern um, that's in a position of power that can say, well, hang on, this, this area needs to be looked at. Um, maybe there is a point here. Why, why aren't people, um, why, why, particularly pensioners, why, I mean, why can't pensioners buy, buy their own house? Particularly when the houses have been valued uh, by the council at being under £40,000. Um, in tax band A. So um, what's the big problem? You've got mass, you've, if, if anybody went to a mortgage lender and said they've got 20, sorry, 75% uh, to lay down on a mortgage, 75%, I mean, surely that mortgage uh, uh, person sh should snap, regardless of who it is, a pensioner or whoever, if somebody's got 75% already in the house paid, Surely that mortgage person sh should think, well, hang on, I can sell this house for at least 75% uh, and get my own money back if, if, if there's ever a default. Surely um, it, it, this, this um, topic is, is kind of crying out for somebody to have a serious look at it. And the question has got to be asked, why aren't people in power, people that we've entrusted, why aren't people looking at this big, big problem? And it is a big problem in my area. Loads and loads of people would want to buy their flat with a 75% discount. I mean, you'd be virtually mad not to if, you, if you're eligible for that kind of a discount. So we've got to say to politicians, um, national and local politicians, you know, what, what's the big problem? Why, why has nothing been done on this? And uh, local councillors um, surely can't complain about this because 90% of a councillor's job in the past has been to do with um, problems with council housing and, and rents and things like that to do with the council. Now all those council areas have been transferred to housing associations. Councillors don't have this um, massive, great big um, workload where they've got to be looking at, at council matters. 
uh, councils not upkeeping the properties, councils not doing this. So what are councillors doing? I mean, surely they've got a massive um, amount of time now to look at the serious problems that people are encountering. And that, as John's saying, why can't somebody with a 75% discount get a mortgage? It's ludicrous um, why nobody is looking at this. So I, I don't know. Yeah. Is anybody in the audience? I don't no. know. Can what? I just reply to Vassar up the? Um, what's Vassar on the online is saying? Lots of residents have exercised their right to buy. About seventy, you can exercise your right to buy with other members of your family or friends. Some of who are able to get a mortgage easily. Well, my reply to that Vassar is, okay, maybe. 70 people have exercised the right to buy, but it's getting steadily more difficult to get a mortgage. Um, if I had have applied for a mortgage two years ago for my flat, at that time the flats were worth or were valued at £29,000, and I could have got, got it under the right to buy for eight or £9,000. Um, today the value, or when I, it's gone even higher now, but when I put in for my right to buy, my flat was valued at £52,000 and um, there's a limit on the amount of money you're paid in the north of England. Um, if I'd have been down south, I would have got maybe £34,000 under the right to buy discount. But um, because we come from the north, that discount um, was limited to £26,500. So I have had to try and get um, a mortgage for £26,500. And to be honest with everybody, I don't really need a mortgage now because when I see which way it was going, um, I managed to scrape together the, the money from family and friends. And not all of your family or your friends want to get a mortgage with you. They've got their own and they've got their own debts. And they're risking everything if they're involved in other people's mortgages. Um, so that, that's the answer to that part of it. But, um, we, you know, it, it is a problem. I've, I've managed, I've been lucky to find the money, but I've read in the housing magazines that the price of property is going so high that even when people um, exercise the right to buy and get their discount, that they're not earning enough to even get a mortgage on what's left after the discount has been deducted. And um, the whole housing is in a, in a mess. And I'm a labour man myself, but I've got to agree with Michael Howard. L Conservatives have done more for, for housing and they've built more houses for, for, um, for, for the public or council houses, if you like, than what the, the Labour government's ever built in its entire history. And um, I would agree with that. It makes you wonder, you know, well, this, it's a fact. I mean, as I say, I'm a Labour man, but it's a fact. Labour is absolutely useless as, well, as regards as housing is concerned. And, and I hope that the Conservatives get in and everybody, and if they keep the promise, everybody who comes under a social landlord will be able to buy their flats. Yeah, let, let's hope so. But there's, there's somebody responding then, it's a, a point that's got to be made. Uh, it's by somebody that's anonymous, and they say, well, not everybody uh, w wants to buy the house. This, sorry, they say lots of people don't want to buy the house um, with the right to buy. Well, well, okay, some people might not want to buy them. It is a, a big responsibility um, in like taking charge of your own life, um, looking after your own house, being responsible for the maintenance and that kind of thing. It is a big responsibility, but even so, a lot of people in my area, the, the vast majority of, of the people um, that, that are part of my tenants association, not my tenants association, the tenants association I belong to, do want to buy their own houses. And the thing is, if you are in pensionable age, uh, you're buying not only for yourself um, and the massive benefits that that can bring to you, but you're also buying uh, something that you can pass on to your children. This is something really of value that you can pass on uh, as a great benefit to the next generation and, and particularly to your own family. It's a massive, massive incentive. And why isn't the government, it's got to be laid at the government's hands. I mean, uh, John mentioned uh, writing to John Prescott quite some time ago. I've got a letter here. It was written uh, by Dougie Kidd, who's the chair of our uh, residents' association, Vizra. And this letter was sent on 
the 14th of July, 2003. Since that letter was sent, we have not had one single reply from John Prescott's department, not even an acknowledgement. So with, we think um, there's something amiss when somebody can't respond to a letter asking for a basic human right. And, and that's the right to, in fact, we used to have a right to a mortgage, didn't we, at one time yeah. with the council. And um, we were promised all along with the uh, Housing Action Trust system. And we don't know if the people doing the stock transfer systems as, as well have been promised the same thing. But we, we were told um, all along that our particular rights would stay the same as if we had remained council tenants. But over a long period of time, we seem to have had some kind of an erosion. And it's not as if we're um, you know, asking impossible things. A lot of the things that uh, people um, like to get involved with, not just on um, mortgage and that kind of thing, th th there are issues that w actually bring benefits to the area, uh, help uh, decrease the workload of, of uh, housing associations themselves and help clear, clear up problem areas. If people own their own houses, uh, there'd be more pride taken in an area uh, rather than you know, being f uh, feeling part of a treadmill. If, if, if somebody um, could exercise the right to buy um, in pensionable age, I, I'm quite sure it'd be a, a you know, it, it, it would turn over vast areas for the better. Paul, I've been lucky than you with John Prescott and the Office of the Deputy Prime Minister. I'll just read an excerpt from the letter to me, which co covers the right to buy. And in this, he says, thank you, well, the person who replied says, thank you for your letter of the 26th of March 2004 to the Deputy Prime Minister, in which you raised concerns about three issues lending on right to buy properties, unfair water charges, and the siting of mobile phone mast. You will appreciate that the Deputy Prime Minister has used many letters and I've been asked to reply. We can understand the frustration of any tenants who are un unobtained, unable to obtain a mortgage loan to buy the properties they live in under the right to buy scheme. The fact is that the right to buy means the right for the tenant to purchase his or her current home. But it is also the case that the scheme cannot guarantee that the property will be attractive to mortgage lenders or indeed any future purchaser if the time came to sell on. You suggest that the government should provide mortgages at the market rate. When the right to buy scheme was introduced, the government included a provision in the Housing Act 1980 that allowed tenants a right to, a, right to a mortgage from their councils. This right was abolished by the Least Old Reform Housing and Urban Development Act 1993. The right to a mortgage was originally created because it was thought that private lenders might be reluctant to lend to purchasers intending to buy under the right to buy scheme. This did not, in most cases, prove to be the case. And with the, and with the introduction of the rent to mortgage scheme, which is designed to bring home ownership within the reach of tenants who cannot afford the full purchase price under the right to buy, it was considered by ministers that this new option removed or greatly lessened the need for the right to buy tenants to a mortgage from their landlords. There are no proposals to reintroduce the right to a mortgage. There is, however, nothing that forbids councils offering mortgages if they wish, but is now at their discretion and not as of right. Section 435 of Housing Act 1985 gives councils the power to advance, to advance money for house purchase. And that's on, on the right to buy. Um, it seems to me is that we're back to square one. No matter what the laws done or what the laws change, we're back to square. We're back to square one. And they they should have left it what, what as it was, and they should have allowed the RSLs to give people a mortgage, and then we wouldn't have this problem. Um, there is a government um, department or a government scheme and I think it's called um, what, what's it the homeowners task force and funny enough Brenda Dean is on that task force and um, a guy from the council of mortgage lenders and that's not a bad mixture there you know so why doesn't Brenda Dean and this guy from the council of mortgage lenders if they are serious about people owning their homes why don't they get together and try and solve this problem you know and I think um, if we want to close the um, program now, this would be the last thing I would like to say. If the government or anybody is serious about people owning their own homes, sort this mortgage problem out for the people living with, who've got a social landlord, 
because it is, class district, it is a class issue as far as I'm concerned. A section of society is disadvantaged and I hope one day, if things don't change, that I can take it to the Court of Human Rights. Thank you. Yes, this show has, has been uh, quite rightly focused on the problems of pensioners with mortgages. Um, there is a, another show on the 4th of June at 2 o'clock. Uh, this will focus um, on um, what local politicians are doing in our area uh, as far as the right to buy and also mortgages are concerned and also the other, other general matters, particularly with the elections on the Ju June the 10th. Um, please watch that particular show. Um, we'll be also talking as a, a natural extension from this one on the problems of people not yet in pensionable age. I'll give myself a, as an example a, as, as somebody that owns their own business uh, trading that would like to exercise their right to buy and their right to a 75% discount. Uh, and yet um, politicians um, seem to be like graduate eroding and eroding away when we can actually apply for the right to buy. In the old days um, of the Conservative government, you could apply for a right to buy at any time. Now we've, got to, we've been told to wait for either 10 years or 15 years, which will make me pensionable age. Uh, and it also, in, if we don't do anything about it now, I'll be encountering the same problems that, that John's been encountering. Uh, so that particular show will be screened 2 o'clock, Friday, 4th of June. Hope to see you there. Nice. And I don't, uh, unless anybody's got any questions or... Anybody else want to ask one question? Can we come to the mic? No. Just one question. Is it on? Are we on? You have to push it. It's a button on it, hasn't he? Yeah, you're on. You should be on. Yeah. Hello. Just one question anyway. Um, regarding flats and high-rising um, apartments, on Merseyside, this is not to do really in a way what you've seen about buying, on Merseyside, on Merseyside, so many high-rising flats have been knocked down. What guarantee have you got that these flats are going to still be standing to hand on down to your children or anything like that? Uh, particularly over in the Wirral, so many, they were built years ago and they've been knocked down. And where those flats were, they're building houses. Now, I've seen some places in Liverpool and areas where flats have been knocked down. Admittedly, some have been refurbished, but what guarantee have you got these flats that they're going to be standing in years to come? Well, Liverpool I was an Action Trust took over in 1992 with the remit to um, refurbish all the blocks in Liverpool. They found out this wasn't viable, and um, the policy was to demolish... Um, as many blocks of flats as possible and although a lot of people didn't agree with this policy um, it became a commercial issue instead of a looking after the tenants wishes issue um, the flats that that are still remain standing there Sefton Park um, Wilson and Ash Grange they were kept standing basically because um, there was no land round and around about to um, house the people from the flats. The flats that are getting refurbished, as I say, mine is getting refurbished to the tune of four and a half million. Mm. And in the area alone, um, there's 24 million pounds worth of development um, being done. These flats are getting reverb refurbished to a very high standard. And um, it's what they call a 30-year standard. So, you've got to, you so you're guaranteed, basically, that your flats are going to be there for 30 years. Yeah, okay, so th that's the best way I can answer that uh, question. There's something... Yeah, that's the only sort of answer you can give, really. Well, there's, a, there's another answer to it as well, uh, as, as to the background of why uh, flats have been demolished. Uh, originally, uh, the Housing Action Trust uh, said that each individual unit would cost £96,000 to refurbish and therefore it wasn't viable. Um, we've had uh, quotations from uh, similar flats that have been refurbished for less than £30,000. The original council estimate was £26,000 per unit, realising that these flats were in uh, generally poor condition. So the council and all the estimates that we've had, barring the heart, were re under £30,000. In fact, Rycroft, I understand, was uh, refurbished for around about that amount as well. Uh, the other thing is that um, 
a great big question mark has been put over refurbishment by the Kurz report, which was part financed by the HUD. Um, and I remember bringing up an issue um, when I was a high-rise tenant group, HUD tenant representative, um, where flats were almost being um, window dressed as for dereliction. The, you know, smart flats that, that look great um, were all of a sudden, there, the curtains were being torn and hanging down. And we found out later, um, I mean, Sue Thomas at the time, uh, did give her credit, she said that she would make sure that all these flats were like uh, not tampered with and uh, she would make sure that the curtains didn't look derelict. Um, but the thing is, it occurs to me later that this was roughly about the, the time when the Kurz report um, un report was undertaken, and um, this, the Kurz report said that there was d no demand. But wh what's got to be said now is um, one of the flats that no demand um, was apportioned to was was Adelaide and was it Adelaide or Bislam Tower? Uh, as soon as um, w it, the demand is like um, questioned, um, we find out there's a pr private developer involved, and all of a sudden uh, the the chief executive of the Housing Action Trust, David Green, says there's a massive demand um, for this particular block of flats. Um, and again, uh, flats were sold off for 10 pence. There's a massive demand there. They, they originally went, were sold for around about just under 50,000 pounds. Some of those flats went for just less than 50,000 pounds to sell on the market. So how much did it cost to refurbish? Uh, so the question is, has got to come back. A lot of them were demolished, but we've got to ask, on the, the, about the pretext that they were demolished on. W was it the, 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 the 96,000 pound, or was it due to the Kurz report to say there was de no demand? So those two questions about uh, de de um, demolishing tower blocks have got to come out. Well, I, I would think we've just about exhausted um, the subject. Um, as I say, my main views was on the mortgages, and um, I think I've exhausted that. And unless Paul wants to say anything more on the right to buy, um, no, I think you covered all bases. It's just to welcome you to uh, the, ne the next show on uh, June the fourth, two o'clock. It's called the Residential Debates, um, where we'll be uh, looking at what local councillors can be doing for us, uh, particularly with all these questions that we've been bringing up. So I hope to see you there at that time. Yeah. And can I just say in closing that um, every time we do a programme, it raises um, issues for another programme. And after the response I've had from the MPs, possibly, if it's allowed, I would like to do a programme in the future about is it worthwhile complaining to your MP or to your city councillors? And right now I'm maybe being unfair because they haven't had much time to get the ball rolling. But right now, I'd say no. It's just a waste of time complaining to anybody. You've got to go through a big, long process. And I hope somewhere along the line, we can take this to the cause of human rights. And with that, I'd like to thank everybody who's responded, everybody who's visited us. And um, I hope we've made some sense to you. And to other people who th are thinking about doing similar programs to ours, I would say that this internet, interactive internet, is fantastic. In time, in my opinion, it's going to take place of the newspapers and it's going to take place of the news on the television. And when it does get more widespread, maybe we'll, we will get the truth and not propaganda because it will be people speaking to people and it won't be the likes of newspapers pushing an issue because they're in one political party or another. And, um, Basically, that's it. I see a bright future for interactive internet and the community, and it can only be good for us. It can't be bad, and I'm surprised that the government lets us do it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you.